Now, I realize you may think you've heard everything about Watergate you may ever want to hear, but I guarantee you tonight you're going to hear a different perspective. Uh, my author guest, Victor Lasky, has written this book. It didn't start with Watergate. It says here in the fly cover, Victor Lasky argues that Watergate was little more than a media event. Now, is that a fair description of this book? Well, uh, I think, uh, I think uh, the more time goes on, the more I'm convinced that Watergate still is a media event. Watergate, the break-in, was a two-bit affair. It was just another political dirty trick. It was stupid, it was criminal, and it was idiotic. That's probably worse than criminal. Uh, the consequences which flow, which, you know, uh, which came out of the, uh, that two-bit affair were enormous. Uh, they provided uh, the opposition, the liberal opposition in the media, and a Democratic-controlled Congress, a means of getting rid of a president they detested. Now, it was a mutual detestation. Now, you really believe what you just said? Of course I do. I mean, it's not I just wrote a about it. I wrote about it. I'm not hyping it. It's okay. true. OK. Uh, anyone who, f who's lived in, who lived in Washington, who knows the media, I'm part of the media, a very tiny part of the media, <laughs> way supposedly on, you know, on the far right. But I'm not really that far right. I was alarmed and amazed at the hysteria which swept Washington as a result of this two-bit break-in. But it provided an excuse for those in the media that wanted to get rid of Nixon. Now, Nixon won an overwhelming victory in 1972. 70, what was it, 70% of the American people voted for him? I don't think it was 70%. Whatever, 68%, whatever it was. It was an overwhelming it was a victory. Landslide, All right. Certainly. Say 68%. Well, you know, by uh, the statistics uh, provided by correspondents in Washington, uh, they themselves voted overwhelmingly for McGovern. So you had that kind of liberal attitude in the media in Washington. It was a mutual detestation. Nixon detested the press, and the press detested him, generally speaking, many significant exceptions. Are you saying that these institutions, or local stations, had a, had a conscious policy no. to be anti-Nixon? No, no, it wasn't well, conscious. Then, what, what it exactly? was un, in many ways, in some ways, it was conscious. And a part of the Washington Post, it was conscious. You mean Ben Bradley called the staff together and no, said, "Let's no, get no, Nixon." No. Well, well, that's what that's what it amounted to. Well, now, did he? That's do what that? it amounted to. Yeah. No, no, not according to the record. He didn't call him. Let's get Nixon. But everything they did, from the moment he got in, was to try to get him one way or the other to embarrass him constantly. You know. Uh, and uh, the fact of the matter is that Nixon provided him the sword. He himself said it in the Frost interviews. He said, I gave him the sword, and they plunged it in. Nixon botched up what was essentially a nothing affair. As I say in my book, there were far worse things that occurred in previous administrations under Roosevelt, Johnson, and Kennedy than occurred under Nixon. Now, that's basically your premise. That that's not only a premise. Okay. I prove it. Uh, LBJ, uh, following the example of uh, the Kennedy brothers, uh, kept not only uh, Ms. Dr. King, Martin Luther King's uh, uh, phones tapped and under surveillance, but the interesting and iron ironic thing was that the FBI, with approval from the White House, began examining and bugging Dr. King's bedroom activities. Well, you know, I, uh, I, I've written an X-rated book. I don't want to make this an X-rated show. But the point is that here's the President of the United States sitting in the Oval Office playing recordings of Dr. King's private affairs, and I really, really mean affairs, yeah. and it was none of his business. You don't like Dr. King, God bless you, but it's none of your business what he does in private life. And I say to you, there was nothing as reprehensible ever done by Richard Nixon as was done by... Lyndon Johnson to Dr. Martin Luther King. And moreover, the press knew it. And Ben Bradley knew it. And Ben Bradley complained to Katzenbach, as I pointed out in my book, who was then acting attorney general. Katzenbach flies down to the ranch. Lyndon Johnson says, you know, I, I know nothing about it. He lied. And the next thing we know, as I point out in my book, there's a memorandum in the FBI files where Bill Moyers, you, you ever heard of Bill Moyers? You've heard of Bill Moyers. I think he's on CBS. Now. I heard of him. 
And Bill Moyers calls in the FBI and says, look, stay away from Ben Bradley. He's a bad guy. He's a pal of the Kennedys. We don't trust him. Lyndon Johnson, we don't trust him. Incidentally, Bill Moyers was a Watergate all by himself. Now, Victor, right there, you have, it seems a little chink in your reasoning. Leave that ben, name out of, you know, you know, we get that anti-defamation league. Ben, ben Bradley was not a friend of the LBJ administration. That's right. Because he was pro-Kennedy. Now, you're now saying that Ben Bradley looked the other way when he learned I'm telling you that Ben Bradley, according to the record, and I'm a friend of Ben's. I hope I still am. You used but after to be. this book, I used to be. <laughs> ben was my neighbor in Washington and at the Watergate, by the way, and I like him very much. But uh, the facts are these. He complained, and very justifiably, about the FBI tapes on Dr. King. And he said, you know, the FBI's going around and we, you know, uh, playing them. But he never disclosed that fact until years later when he was asked about he it. Sure he did complain. He didn't assign a but reporter he did not. to... Now, here's a man who saved us from all the interpretations of Richard Nixon. He saved the Constitution. He won an Academy Award as a great actor, or was it the other guy? I always forget. Jason, R no, it was Ben Bradley. Ben Bradley won an Academy Award, all the president's men and all that nonsense. And let me tell you, he never published one word about what was going on in the Johnson administration, and he knew about it. And that's why I say my book goes into the hypocrisy of the media, the cover-up of the media of many of these things, not only that, other, other newspaper men knew about it, but they never reported it. That's the point. I just want to say a word in some defense. I, th I don't disagree with your basic premise that the, the press is violently, liberally disposed. Uh, just to say a word to give some balance, but... You're not a liberal, are you, Jim? I don't know. If I am, I try to be in the middle. I think you are. I try to be. I think you're anyway. fair. Anyway, I would recommend the book because it's one of the few books which gives a different perspective to Watergate. And God knows we need a different perspective because most of the other books have had a certain slant to them. It's called It Didn't Start with Watergate. You've been listening and watching Victor Laska, the author. Victor, thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate it. We'll be right back.